with week six of distance learning and musical moments with Mrs. Reader. The next phase of our distance learning is going to be focused on instruments and instrument families. It's one of my favorite units to teach, largely because I am an instrumentalist. I spent my first part of my career in Iowa as a five through 12 band director. And I just am really passionate about instrument education and getting you guys instruments into your hands and making music. So I'm very excited to present to you the four different families as kind of different um, 10 to 15 minute instructional videos. And then I'm going to also do some mini lessons on some of the instruments um, by themselves. So like the flute, clarinet, saxophone, trumpet, etc. So like I said, there's four families, woodwind, percussion, brass, and strings. At Blooming Prairie, we offer just the band instruments for you to learn um, as part of the fifth and sixth grade and then, of course, on um, band program. We do have ukuleles for fifth and sixth graders in the classroom, but other than that, we don't offer any string education. So if that's something your family is interested in, there are plenty of professional musicians and music teachers in Austin, Owatonna, and Rochester. So if you want to pursue strings, um, get in touch with Mr. Reichus or myself, and we will help guide you through that process. But otherwise, we're going to learn about the other band instruments and the different sounds they make, how they're created, um, and how we can identify them from one another based on both the way they look and the way they sound. So well, let's get started with our four different families. I'm excited, and I hope you are too. And no matter how much growth we have in these next few weeks, whether it's a little or a lot, I'm just excited to get to spend some more time with you and, um, and keep continuing our music experience and interacting with the different things. Um, even though you are at home and I'm at home, um, we can still continue to learn and grow. I miss all my awesome blossoms. And I hope you enjoy this next phase of music education through distance learning. Let's start with some fast facts about the woodwind family. Historically, most of the woodwinds were made from wood or have some sort of wood element to them. For example, the clarinet, the oboe, English horn, piccolo, bassoon, those are all still made from wood to, to this day. And we use all sorts of different metals like brass and silver. We can use some plastic composites. And those new materials that we use today to make instruments help lower the cost of them and they protect the life of the instrument. You can use something that's a composite a much longer um, than you can something that's made from wood. It just takes different care. So like this flute right here, originally back in the 17 and 1800s, flutes were made from all sorts of different materials. They tried gold, they tried crystal and glass, all sorts of really different things to um, develop it and make the sound that they were looking for. Eventually it became to be made from silver because that achieved the, the sound that was ideal for the flute. And other instruments um, thousands of years ago actually started out being made from seashells or from bones. Um, from reeds, from all sorts of different materials people could get their hands on and create musical instruments from. One thing that combines all of the instruments into the same category, regardless of what they're made from, is that they are aerophones. They need air to create the vibration and the sound. So we're going to blow into a mouthpiece or across a mouthpiece or hum, blow into the mouthpiece and vibrate a piece of wood. The flute has the tone hole that we blow across, much like the top um, of a pop bottle. So I blow across that to create the sound. Whereas a clarinet I would, or a saxophone, I would attach a piece of wood to a mouthpiece and then blow into that to vibrate the mouthpiece. Um, we, that's called a single reed, and other woodwinds have what we call a double reed, and that's two pieces of wood tied together, and then those two pieces of wood go into your mouth like a mouthpiece, and those vibrate also to make the sound. When you blow that air into the instrument, it travels down the long tube or column. So one thing you'll notice that unites all of the woodwinds is that they're usually one long column or tube or cylinder. The saxophone has a little bit of a twist in the horn part of it, but um, unlike the brass instruments that have coiled tubing, which we'll talk about later, all of the woodwinds have basically columns. 
And something else that unites them are all these different key mechanisms. So there's holes all the way down the column of the woodwind instrument, and some are open and some have key mechanisms over the top. And different combinations of fingerings make different pitches. <laughs> So as you could see and listen, as I change my fingers, I made different sounds on my instrument. So let's talk really super fast through those fast facts again. Historically made from wood, but now they can be made from metal, wood, and different plastic composites. They are aerophones. They need air to make a sound. You can blow into or across a mouthpiece. Um, they have tone holes or single or double reeds, and they have a cylinder or cone shape with an open column for the air to travel and they have key mechanisms. So there's our fast facts about the woodwind family. Next up is the brass family fast facts. So a couple things about the brass is that they're all made from metal. There's no different components on any of the brass instruments. They are also aerophones, just like the woodwinds, meaning that you need to blow air through the instrument. However, we do it a little bit differently. We're going to buzz into a mouthpiece. And all mouthpieces have this cup shape to them. So some are much bigger, of course, if it's a large instrument like the tuba versus the trumpet or the French horn that have much smaller. Some cups are much more shallow. They have a, a very small inside, and some cups are very deep. Also, the rim can be different lengths and widths and thicknesses um, depending on the instrument. So I'm going to purse my lips together, flatten my chin, and I'm going to buzz like I would if I was um, kind of making a tooting noise. And I'm going to take that, that buzz, I'm going to put it into the mouthpiece. And you can see by how I change my lip shape and speeding or slowing up the air, how I can change the pitch just on the mouthpiece alone. So that's a little bit of how we make a sound on a brass instrument. The next part that all brass instruments share in common is that they either have valves, rotors, or slides. There are no key mechanisms generally to any brass instrument that's made today. Some historical ones you might find some key mechanisms on, um, but they all will have valves, like the trumpet, where we push the different valve or piston down. Um, some, like the French horn, and some really expensive tubas will have rotors. And so it's a similar situation, but it's a button that gets pressed and then another um, thing that opens um, the, the inside of the, the valve and lets the air flow through. Trombones are the only instrument in the brass family that has a slide. And you can see that in the picture. Um, you can see that long slide. So we're going to move that slide down to change the pitch. Something else that all brass instruments share in common is the coiled tubing. So whereas the woodwinds were usually a column or a cylinder, all brass instruments have all sorts of tubing. So when I blow into the mouthpiece, it travels down the lead pipe and then coils around and enters each of the valves. And the different combinations of valves combined with the air and lip tension will change the pitch. So here's a little bit of an example when the instrument's all put together. you recognize that little tune there. So that's something that all the brass instruments share in common. All metal, aerophone, they need air. We're going to all buzz into a cup-shaped mouthpiece. They all have valves, rotor, and the trombone has the slide, and it's all coiled tubing. That's your brass fast facts. Let's talk percussion family for a minute. There are three categories of percussion instruments. Definite pitch, indefinite pitch, and auxiliary or world percussion. Let's start with what they all share in common, and that is the fact that they need to be hit, struck, or shook with either hands or with like a mallet or a stick.
stick. So they don't need air from our mouth to make a sound. They vibrate as a whole instrument, which makes them an idiophone. Some other idiophones in the percussion family are also called membranophones. Now these aren't words I expect you to uh, remember, but they are helpful in understanding the different ways that each of the instrument families produce sound. A membranophone is simply like a membrane or a surface, like this tambourine. So it has this top to it, a membrane, and we can hit, strike, or shake that to make a different sound. Let's start with our discussion on the definite pitch instruments. This is an ORF xylophone from in our classroom. And if I play the bars, and you can see that the bars are different sizes, some are long, some are short, and each of those different bars makes a different definite pitch according to the musical alphabet. So there you can hear as I play up the instrument, it changes to higher pitches, the smaller the bars get, and it changes to lower pitches or definite sounds, the bigger the bars get. Other instruments that fall into that category would be the marimba, would be the other big main xylophones like what we would have in band class. Um, it would also be something called the vibraphone and chimes and glockenspiel, all sorts of different fun names to say. Try saying glockenspiel. Glockenspiel, that's fun to say. Chimes are like the boom whackers, and they are metal tubes that hang suspended and we hit them with a hammer. Not like a metal hammer that you're gonna nail nails into, it's a special musical hammer. Speaking of the boom whackers, they are like those chimes and they're idiophones because they are a complete musical instrument. When I strike them, they make a sound. So, idiophones, the whole instrument makes a sound, I have to strike it and create a vibration of the instrument to make that pitch. Boom whackers are what we would call um, pitched idiophones, right? We also have things like handbells. So they have little things on the inside, right, that shake, but I can't make a sound unless I do something with my hands to strike that surface. So these are definite pitched idiophones. Indefinite pitch applies to the instruments that have to still be struck or hit or tapped, but they are instruments like the bass drum that's big, and that's gonna have a big membrane on a phone, big, huge membrane to play. And because it's so large, just like the tuba, it will play a very low pitch, but it doesn't match to any necessarily specific pitch like the musical alphabet from the piano or anything like that. We have snare drums, we have tom-toms, um, we have cymbals, uh, we have all sorts of other instruments that we strike the surface and based on the size of the drum itself, it will change, but there's no definite pitch. Something I can give you as an example of that are these African drums. There are the three different colors from the classroom. There's that orange, red, and green. And each one of the different drums has a little bit different shape and size. And we know from playing the African drums in the classroom that they also make different pitches. A little bit higher, a little bit lower. So I hit that membrane on top. And it vibrates the whole entire instrument to create the sound. So that's our indefinite pitch instruments. We also have some auxiliary or world percussion. Just like all of the rest of them, they have to be hit or struck or um, shook. So here's an go go bell, and I'm gonna tap it. It's kind of like a cowbell. And this little one on top, because it's a little bit smaller and shorter, it makes a higher sound. And the bigger one that's longer and a little bit wider, it's gonna make a lower sound. But I have to hit them to make those sounds occur. Maraca, I'm gonna shake it. This is a wee row, so it kind of sounds like a frog or a fish. So all these different world instruments, there's literally thousands of them from across the world, and they can color and make all sorts of different special effects in the music. So we call them auxiliary or extra percussion, um, and often they're called world percussion instruments as well. 
So definite pitched, indefinite pitched, world and auxiliary. And all percussion instruments need to be hit, struck, or shook by your hands or by a stick or mallet to make their vibrations occur. Our last family to talk about is the string family. And the string family has a couple different uses. And some of those are symphonic or with like a symphony. And some of them are specific to different genres like country music or Appalachian folk tunes or even world music like the sitar in India or the koto in Japan. So something that all string instruments have in common is that they actually have <gasps> strings. They're called a chordophone. So these, um, each of these strings is at a different tension and has a different thickness and will um, vibrate at certain set pitches. And we use the tuning pegs to keep them attached to the instrument and also to tune them to certain pitches. So the violin, the viola, cello, string bass, and the harp are typical symphony instruments. They're also solo instruments and most commonly will play single pitches like this. Oops. So that's an example of single pitches, like a melody line or a tune. Um, instruments that will play full chords are things like the ukulele, the guitar, the mandolin, the banjo, those sort of instruments. And that is created by playing multiple strings at once with different combinations. So there's a C chord, there's an F, and here's a G7, and back to C. So what that means is that I'm putting my finger at different tensions at different places on the neck or the fretboard and creating different combinations of pitches. Uh, violins are played that same way, cellos are played that same way, where there's different strings and we create different tension down the neck board to create those different definite pitches of the musical alphabet. Strings can either be plucked, they can be strummed, they can be bowed, um, so that big long bow that has the horse hair on it, like if I was gonna hold this like a violin, I would draw that across the strings to create the vibration. Um, or if I was gonna play it like a cello, sitting upright, I draw that across the strings. So plucked or picked, strummed or bowed. Um, we can also have blocked chords, where I can just strum and play all of the notes at once, or we can pick through them. So a chordophone, um, that is the string instrument. We have the tuning pegs that hold the strings on. We have multiple different strings. Some instruments have as little as four. Some have a lot more, like the koto in Japan has significantly more. Um, we, they all have a body and it's usually a cavity um, and it has some sort of tone hole for the vibrations to escape and to um, amplify its sound. Now, you may have seen electric guitars and those are gonna have to plug in with an electric cord or some sort of wireless device to an amplification system, something that will amplify or project the sound. Acoustic instruments are one that create their own sounds. So any time you hear acoustic guitar, you, you know that that means that it's not plugged into an electric source. So um, I hope this helps you understand a little bit more of this fourth family of instruments, the chordophones, the strings, which features our symphonic instruments like the violin, viola, cello, string bass, and harp, and also other instruments that can be used for specific genres or styles of music, um, like country music, rock and roll, um, folk tunes, and of course, world music. Let's take one last look over all the different families before we're done with today's lesson. We started with the woodwind family, instruments that are made out of a column or um, a cone, so they might start a little bit narrower and then get wider at the bottom. They have to use air, so they're an aerophone. We blow across a mouthpiece or into a mouthpiece. There's holes all the way down the instrument with key mechanisms and different combinations make different definite pitches. The next instrument family we profiled was the brass. 
and they are uh, made of metal and they have different cup shaped mouthpieces and a bell shaped amplification at the bottom. They have valves, rotors, or um, some of them will have a slide like the trombone. We need to buzz our lips and the sound and the air travels through all the coil tubing and the different combinations of valves will change the pitches. <laughs> profiled was the percussion instruments and remember they have three categories definite pitch unpitched and auxiliary or world so our definite pitches are things that can play the musical alphabet and they're called idiophones or membranophones because they make their own sound the whole instrument will vibrate we have our membranophone which is like a membrane that we can tap and then that creates the vibration in the instrument itself. And then we have some of our world percussion, things that come from around the world, like Africa or Brazil. And all of the percussion instruments need to be struck, hit, tap, or shook with our hands or a stick or a mallet. Our final family was the string family, and they're called chordophones. And the strings will vibrate at different tensions down the neck board to create definite pitches in either a melody or in a chord. Strings have hollow bodies or hollow cavities and a tone hole for the vibrations to escape. So there's a quick, very quick rundown of all the different instrument families and some of the specific instruments from within those families. I'll have some mini lessons that'll be coming to you shortly um, on different specific instruments. And until that time, I hope you guys are staying safe, staying healthy, and staying connected. Bye!